Welcome into New York, Her. I'm Caroline Hendershot. So excited to have you guys listening for another episode. New York, Her, a podcast based on New York and all of its facets of football fans. Today, I have Kate Norkalunas joining me. She's also known as Kate from TikTok. Yeah, I am. Kate from TikTok. Kate. Well, just at Kate now. Which, right. Okay. I yep. was going to say you yep. changed the username. When I was applying to get verified on TikTok, mm -hmm. I can't, you couldn't have TikTok in the name. Oh. So they asked me, they said, do you want just at Kate? And I was like, yeah. Why, like, why wouldn't <laughs> I want perfect. that? Yeah, no, yeah. It, was, it was like this opportunity. I was, I had to grab it. I had to take it. Of course. So I'm just at Kate now. Okay, perfect. Nice yeah. and simple, yeah. clean, yep. easy to go. Okay, so Kate, for people who don't know you or what you do, yep. how would you explain it to them? So I really got my start on TikTok with food, but I really feel like I have become more of lifestyle content, mm -hmm. overall uh, body positivity, just really showing that it is okay and it's cool to be yourself on social media and and be the person that you are off of social media, on social media, and vice versa. Right. Okay, so you graduated from Marist in 2018. Yes. And you were trending towards a fashion. Like, you had, do you have a degree in fashion I from do. Marist? I do. have a BFA in fashion okay. design. Okay, and I saw a really fun um, interview yeah. of you on Good Morning America yep. of, like, remaking a bridal gown yep. into a new outfit. Yep. We, Was that part of, like, curriculum or? No, so one of my friends and I got the opportunity to be in this wedding dress revamp competition mm -hmm. on Good Morning America. And basically we had to deconstruct a wedding gown and turn it into something completely different and it had to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So we used turmeric to dye the fabric. <laughs> we used roses to dye it. So it was green or it was um, yellow and purple. Uh -huh. And we deconstructed it all, took all the beads apart, put it all back together. We did not win the competition. Okay. But it, okay. Was, it was just the best experience. It was so much fun. We were we were in the middle of Times Square where they were filming and it was, it was incredible. But it was not a part of the curriculum. <laughs> it was just a fun <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. So then coming out of college with that BFA, what was your first job? So my first job I got as an assistant designer at a menswear company and I worked there for three years. I became an associate during the pandemic. We obviously went and worked from home. We thought it was going to be two weeks, mm -hmm. a month. And at this time I had known what TikTok was. I had downloaded the app. Um, I was making a salary, like in New York City, you can you can make a salary, but also if you're under a certain amount, you can make overtime. And so I had the opportunities to make overtime, but they took away that opportunity to make overtime because of the pandemic. Gotcha. They were letting people off, and I was just grateful to even have a job at right. that point. Mm -hmm. And so they took away our overtime and we really had to work within our eight hours. We, they were very strict about it. So mm -hmm. I had a lot of time on my hands. Right. And so during my lunch break, during after I would work, I would make TikToks mm -hmm. and watch a lot of YouTube, a lot of Netflix. And specifically on YouTube, I was watching mukbangs. I don't know what was I don't know what was drawing me into <laughs> watching people eat, but I was so fascinated by it. And right. I think subconsciously in the back of my mind, I was thinking, I haven't seen this on TikTok, mm -hmm. so let me try it out. And I did, and the video blew up, and that's kind of how I got my start. And it's funny enough because I obviously am very open about my eating disorder and my recovery process and that whole journey. And Taco Bell used to be one of my biggest fear foods. Yeah. And that's the thing that has given me this career. No way. Yeah. That is, yeah. that's like so special because it's such a full circle moment. Yep. But okay, I'm going to go back for a second because what, what was the first video? Obviously mukbanging is something, for those who don't know, it's just eating food in front of a camera while talking to the yes. camera, right? And normally it's eating like a whole menu okay. of food, but I call my mukbang subpar because okay. I'm eating <laughs> I'm eating one meal right. with everyone. <laughs> right. And it's it's just a it's a fun way to connect with people I think you know because yeah. food in general is a fun way to connect with people yes a hundred percent that's like the center of all you hey you want to go grab dinner you yep. want to go out to lunch yep. kind of thing that's the center of everything yep. and especially we're both Hoboken girls yes the best food the best food the best, the best food I'm gonna remind me to bring that up yes. later because I need to know your favorite go-to spot yeah. but okay so the first video that you released that kind of blew up what was it the Taco Bell mukbang. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 
what specifically were you talking about? Just I had filmed about five minutes of footage mm-hmm. eating, mm-hmm. <laughs> eating my Taco Bell order. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it was the Crunchwrap Supreme. Oh, delicious. That, that went viral. But then I was thinking to myself after I posted that one video, I was like, is this a fluke? Can yeah. I, will this do well in other videos? Mm-hmm. And when I say to people, when they ask me about doing TikTok or doing social media, if you find something that does well, repeat it. Do yes. it again. Okay. Try it over again. Okay. So I so I did exactly that. I had about five minutes of footage of this and I just posted the rest of the videos. Yeah. And they kept doing well. And I was like, what is going on? Yeah. People are watching me eat. This is so weird. Yeah. And then it turned into, like I said, more lifestyle now. Um, really just showing so much of my life, but also keeping those boundaries for the things that I right. that I don't want to necessarily show. But but my main focus is to be that person that I needed when I was little on social media. Right. We were talking a little bit before off camera about how different <laughs> social media has changed mm-hmm. in since even like just since we've been introduced to it. Yeah. And it's so different now because mm-hmm. in high school and in college, even it was so much based on perfection yep. and this looks way cooler than I'm actually enjoying. Like this is so much cooler than any of you are doing and all of that. And so it's, it's crazy because when you were making those videos, did you think, Oh, I want to be this role model that I never had, or did it just naturally come to you? I have always wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to put the kind of positivity that I have in my bones out Mm -hmm. there. I've just always been that kind of person. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how to explain that further, but this has been the most fulfilling thing I've ever done in my life because I can see, I can't see the total impact, but when people come up to me in Hoboken or they message me, they let me know how much I'm helping them. But what they don't really understand is how much they've helped me as well. And one moment that I can specifically remember was when I was on TikTok at the beginning I still was very much in my disordered eating kind of phase, at least my at least the the brain that it comes with it. Right. And it's really hard. It's not a it's not a full stop. You know, in recovery, you are constantly working towards yourself every single day. And I always say that it is a marathon, not a sprint Mm -hmm. with this. Every day is working. You're working towards it. And. I had gotten Levain cookies, and if you don't know what Levain cookies is, it's the amazing amazing cookies in New York City, Mm -hmm. and they sent them to me. And at this time, during the pandemic too, everyone was going outside and working out and walking and and being active, you know, because Mm -hmm. you were in your apartment and you were just like going going crazy. crazy. So I I went on camera and I said, oh my gosh, guys, Levain sent me these cookies. I'm gonna go take a run so that I can deserve these cookies. Mm -hmm. And I can remember this comment because it really just changed my perspective. It was like an aha moment. Yep. And someone said, Kate, you can just eat the cookies. You don't need to go work out. You you deserve them regardless. So it was just, it's just these things that. I don't think that people realize how much they're impacting my life and teaching me and changing my perspective in this whole journey. Is it is it strange to have someone who obviously you share a lot so people feel like they know you mm-hmm. but someone you've never met in person kind of give you this advice that you just clicked for you in a way that yeah. maybe nothing else had? Yeah, I mean, I think just seeing it you're you're putting yourself out there that much and at that point, I think I had a couple thousand followers, like uh, maybe like 50,000 mm-hmm. on TikTok. So, and for reference, how many do you have now? I have on TikTok, I have 1.9, I believe. And then on Instagram, that's, m- that's million. Million. Yep. Okay. Just, <laughs> just check in, everybody. We went from thousands to millions. And then um, on Instagram, I think I'm at like 250. I don't, I don't really overanalyze the numbers, the numbers because, yes, there are all people, and I'm so grateful that everyone's there. But it, w- I've been in that place, like growing on social media where it would drive you absolutely right. nuts. And yep. I just don't want it to be that way for mm-hmm. me. It's it's always just been fun and I just try to keep it keep it so fun. Right. Wait, what was your question? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's okay, we're going off on tangents. Um having someone who you've never met give you that advice yeah. that's clicked. I think I think just realizing that when you have a following like this, you have people looking up to you Mm -hmm. and just wanting to, everyone, everyone is, everyone's a human Mm -hmm. at the end of the day and we're all allowed to grow and learn. And I think that just 
seeing that other people also can teach you something and it's adapting and it's learning and being that positive influence and making sure that you're adjusting to those changes, you know, because it is important. I, I've realized that I have these platforms and I have the power to put out positivity and to and to really just like show like I said, it's a, it's a cool to be yourself. And, right. and again, I think that when people give me advice and when people, and I, it's constructive criticism, of I course, think, you yep. know, um, cause there are sometimes I just get like the most absurd comments and uh -huh. I, and I let them roll off. But with, with something like that, it really did make me think. And, um, I'm so grateful for that comment because I can remember to this day and that was like almost three years ago now. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. How lasting of an impact mm -hmm. just just a random comment that mm -hmm. sometimes people, I know sometimes people will kind of get caught up in social media and they don't even think what they're writing and they just write it and it can backfire. Yep. But like also it can be something so positive like that. So it's kind of yep. crazy how just a reactive yep. instinct to comment on something can totally 180 a, a person and their life and all of these decisions. Yep. Okay, so with social media obviously comes a lot, a lot of pressures, mm -hmm in all different facets, but twofold question. Do you think there is a pressure for you specifically to post just because we're always on social media? Like, how do you keep up with that? I feel like I get overwhelmed and I am not good at posting yeah. whatsoever. Uh, I think I have such a great management team mm -hmm. and we have talked about this often because there is that pressure to, to want to post and to keep up keep people updated and all this stuff you know that comes along with it but the conversations i've had with them they're just very supportive and they're like hey if you want to take time for yourself you can take time for yourself mm -hmm. you know you don't have to post every single day you don't have to keep up with it all the time you know D make sure that you're taking care of yourself and they are right. just such incredible people and reminding me that daily this just to make sure that you're keeping up with yourself you know yes before keeping up with everyone else. Right. Prioritizing yourself mm -hmm. over the and content. my mental health and, yes. and making sure that I just, I take the breaks that I need, mm -hmm. you know? But I also, what's great is I don't ever feel that pressure necessarily because mm -hmm. what I'm posting is just for fun anyways. Right. And so I think it's just making sure that I continue keeping my content myself because it's, it's just not, it's not even, it doesn't feel like a job. It just feels like fun. Right. It's like more of just a, this is, a reflection of yeah, me and yeah. what I'm doing. Does did it ever at any point in when you started to kind of blow up, did it feel like, oh no, I I need to be perfect? Like, did you start going down that rabbit hole? I honestly never felt that way, and I think it was because TikTok changed the game for social media. Yeah. You uh, on Instagram previously, you were able to edit, and I know, and I'm I've seen this on TikTok now where you can you can fully edit your body in a video you can mm -hmm. really do this stuff and it's it's really dangerous yep. um but on instagram it was so easy to get away with editing yourself and where you were or how made it how the the perception of your yourself you know right and i feel like it's so different on tiktok because it is video form content you right. can't change a lot of the things like you can't change where you're at you mm -hmm. know when in a video i'm sure that there are some people that can do that but but i but, but i me. but i can't do that <laughs> me and my mere me editing skills yeah, cannot, do, cannot that. do that so i think that tiktok brought this whole new force to social media in a way you know where it's it's almost like forcing us to be even more ourselves yeah you know? and more real yep. and realistic yep. yeah it's it's crazy because i feel like it's the exact opposite of everything that we grew up mm -hmm. consuming mm -hmm. of if you're perfect and that's what you want to be like, that's what you're going to see. Mm -hmm. And now it's more like the more real the content is, the more genuine and funny and authentic and the more the followers go towards yeah. that, which is so yeah. funny. So it's even funny, just like cleaning videos. I find myself watching on yep. TikTok and I'm just like why am I watching this? Like, I never knew that I enjoyed yeah. watching someone like clean a carpet yeah. or it's, whatnot. It's so odd to see the things that you're interested in yep. based on your for you page. Yes, you I know? know, I know. <laughs> Sometimes if you're watching TikTok with 
another person and you're watching their account, you're like, oh, that's really different than what I get yeah, on mine. Yeah. I, love, I love comparing for you pages with yes. my friends. I'm like, are you guys on, like right now, <laughs> right now currently, I think everyone's on this, but that movie with Harry Styles. Oh, everyone's and all on, the drama. And all the mm -hmm. drama. And then I also, what came up on my for you page the other day was this, this girl talking about, she, um, shoes she reviews sneakers for people oh people, amazing people send in pictures of their wear and tear on their shoes <laughs> and she recommends what shoes that they should wear <laughs> okay wait that's actually so funny yeah. because that's that's things people have legitimate jobs to do that and yes. now she's like yeah you just send me a pic I'll she's do like it. for fun i love like reviewing sneakers and she was like i feel like the the hoka 1892 is the best for you or whatever the shoes are yeah. and everyone's like okay, okay. i'll buy it and i'm like Sounds i love good. it <laughs> when did you think like okay these videos are really gaining traction i can make a career out of this so in December 2021, no, mm -hmm. 2020. Okay. Uh, 2020, I... How long had you been on TikTok for at so that point? So I started TikTok, like I started gaining a following on TikTok in April. Okay. And in December, I had started posting Christmas videos as well. Mm -hmm. And my birthday's in December and I've always just loved them. And this was when the duet feature on TikTok was first getting introduced. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I saw this video and it was... Cup, I thought it was cupcakes being made, but I was reacting to, I ended up reacting to how the tray was being made. It was it, it was a 15 second video and I didn't even really even say anything. Yeah. It blew up. Like it went stupid viral. I think it got like a million likes. Oh my God. And I was like, what? I, I really was like, what is this? And yeah. so again, you try it out again to see if it works. And then with that, when that happened, that's when I saw a really big, I saw really big growth on the platform. Okay. I grew 100,000 followers one night. Oh my God. I, like, I can remember that being like, I woke up, I'm like, wait, no, that's not right. Yeah, like, you're like, refresh, I'm refresh. like, this is a glitch. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just kept posting those. And then um, in December, I, was po I had about 900,000 followers in 2020. And I was like, maybe I can do this as a full-time thing. I saw my peers that I had been go like growing up or, um, getting their following on the apps, like mm -hmm. start to do this mm -hmm. as their full-time job. I'm like, maybe this is for me. I, I don't, I don't know. And mm -hmm. I had gotten a couple brand deals and I was doing everything myself. Yep. And I was like, this is crazy. This is so exciting. Yeah. And then in April, 2021, I had my first conversation with a management team. I fell in love with them. They're my, still my managers today. Oh, that's the so best nice. people, just yeah. the best people. And when I sat down with them and talked with them, I had um, just about a million followers on TikTok. I had about 30,000 followers on Instagram. And I only know these numbers because I had to tell them right. all my analytics. Mm -hmm. And they were like, hey, you could do this full time. You have, it's great. Like you're, you're killing it. And I'm like, I was like, you really think? And they were the first people that truly believed in me. Not to say that my family, my boyfriend, my friends, they were always supportive, but because it's such an unconventional job and they were already in the space, mm -hmm. they were they were so supportive and so behind it. So that kind of lit a fire uh, like under my butt. Yeah. And I was like, all right, like this is awesome. Like when I have people that believe in me, you believe in yourself more. 100%. You gain the confidence to, yeah. to know that you could possibly do this. Was that scary being like, I'm gonna quit my stable job and go into this platform that just popped yeah. up like a year ago? So I think it was, but when you start to, when you start to make money off of it mm -hmm. and then my, my financial goals with social media, when I had, I had goals set in mind, I wanted to make what I was making at my full-time job. And right. then I was like, all right, like I want to double what I'm making at my full-time job. Right. And so when I hit these financial goals, all of a sudden it's not as scary. It's not as scary. And like we talked off camera, I feel like I, ha I've had, I've always viewed money as a certain way. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just always want better than not to say that my parents did not provide in, incredible amounts of stuff for me mm -hmm. when I was growing up. But um, again, it's just setting financial goals and making sure you're hitting the go those goals. And when I, before I quit my job, I made sure that I had a certain amount in, in my, in the bank. Yep. And that way I could pay for insurance because when you quit, you lose insurance, yep. you lose these things. And when I did quit my job, my mom was like, what are you doing? Because it is an unconventional job. Of it's course. not something that people normally take risks on, you mm -hmm. know? And it's also a space where our parents couldn't even, 
my parent, my mom could not wrap her head around. Oh, my mom still cannot. That the fact that you can make money off Mm -hmm. the internet and then you could do this as a full-time job, you know? Mm -hmm. So it is, it was scary and it, but it was the right timing. Right. So when I quit, I was going to be going into a new position at work and I just felt like it was the right time for me to take that leap of faith. And, and I, when I took it, it was, it was like I quantum leaped into a whole new life, Amazing. you know, and you just feel like you're, you're going in the right direction. And I also just think that we don't take chances on ourselves enough in this life. And at at the age that I'm at, I'm not married. Yep. I don't have kids. Mm-hmm. I have to worry about myself financially. And obviously my loved ones like that, they are always in the back of my mind. But at the end of the day, I'm not necessarily taking care of another person. Do I, right. do I take care of other people? Absolutely. But yes. I'm, but it really is a perfect opportunity to, to take. And so I did. Right. Like if, if not now, when, when? right. When? So y- you kind of just have to yep. jump into that abyss, yep. even if it is scary or yep. not. When we were talking off camera, you were born, but not raised, born in New York. Born in New York, lived here for a couple years, maybe three years. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to Germany, Mm -hmm. lived there for two and a half years. Then I moved to Florida for about eight months. Then I moved to Washington State Mm -hmm. for about three years. And then I moved to back to Florida. And I was in Florida from sixth grade until my first two years of college until I transferred colleges. And then you went, ended up going back to New York because you went to Marist. Yep. Just so crazy. You were quite literally all over yep. the map. But my point being, New York, obviously a soft spot for you now living in Jersey. Does it feel any different being an influencer in the New York tri-state area versus maybe being more off the map? Yeah. I mean, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. (laughs) Yes. You know, there is really something special about this area, Mm -hmm. whether it is New York or Jersey, you know, because you, when you live in Hoboken, you are essentially a part of New York city. Mm -hmm. Like I, I always think that because you can see New York city, the skyline, you know, I'm like, I'm there, but like, you get the best view of the city you get and you get the best of both worlds. You get, to, you get the view, mm-hmm. but you get you get this homey feeling in yes. Hoboken. Yes, it's you know? a little smaller, a little quainter, and then it's easier to get to MetLife too. Exactly, you know? it's, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's like it's so it's a so one simple. Two punch. Yeah, it's so simple. So, uh, like I said, if you can make it here, and, and it, there is something so special about New York, and I, you can get emotional thinking about it. Whenever I listen to Frank Sinatra, mm-hmm. I'm like. This is so powerful. I'm having the best time here. It's just, it's just people are different here, you know, mm-hmm. and there is such a camaraderie in this area and it, especially with the Jets and New York. And we, yes. and we know that from past seasons yes. and all of these things, you know, but um, it's a great area to be in. Well, it's, it's so crazy because I think that's one of the best things about New York is the loyalty, Mm -hmm. especially with the Jets fan base. They are so, so loyal. loyal. And that's something that as a sports fan, just in general, I love loyal fans because it's, it makes the wins that much better and more meaningful. And it was funny when you came to the preseason game against the Giants this, this season, you were saying it was kind of emotional for you being on the field, which is so funny because I have said that to people like every time I am on the field, every game and every time I am like, wow, this is such a crazy experience. And it just makes you weirdly emotional that you wouldn't think. Well, first, I just am so grateful to even be there and have the opportunities Mm -hmm. to, to be able to connect with the Jets, you know, and, and to be able to get on the field and, and bring my boyfriend who has grown up loving the Jets Mm -hmm. too, you know, and I think that that connection right there is just enough for me. Right. And I grew up watching the Jets every Sunday with my dad, um, because we obviously, I was born here. He grew up in, in the Hudson Valley area. Mm -hmm and loved the Jets. So it was just something that was so established in our household. My mom would make Sunday dinner. Mm -hmm. You would hear, you would hear like the theme songs playing. Such a homey feeling. And then with the fall too. Yes. You know, I was saying that the other day to someone, I'm like, the seasons are changing. Yep. Sunday night football. It's cooler in the mornings. You can feel it. It's the best. It's the best. And while I, 
I love the feeling of it. Do I understand the sport? I'm going to be honest with you. No, <laughs> but I like watching it. Yes. I, I like watching it. What I told you is I don't need you to explain yeah. cover two to me. Like yeah. if you enjoy watching it, that's that's the best part about football. Yep. It is truly for everyone. I talked to Roger Goodell in a yeah. Q&A yeah. a couple months ago, and he said the female NFL fan base is some of it's like the most growing category, yeah. but also the most passionate. Yeah, it's it's in it's crazy. Everyone's like, oh, sports are for guys, but it's it's so much more than that. No. Sports means so much yep. more to people than just the sport itself. It's memories. It's yep. nostalgia. It's yep. all of that. And for me, I enjoy watching other people enjoy this sport. Yes, like that is why I love it. I when when I was at the preseason game, I'm sitting there and I'm watching the Jets come out and. There's this guy and he and I took a video of it and it's just like it it literally is so moving. He's cheering like the Jets coming out and then high fiving his friends and that's the stuff that I cannot get like I will I am such a baby when it comes to stuff. I will literally, I like look back and I was crying at the Me video. Too. Me too. I was crying because I was like, this is the stuff that I live for. I just yep. love, I love having something that brings people together, you yes. know, especially just in these times. And and it, it's just fun that that something like a sport mm -hmm. can bring people together. I know. And it's and it's so nice when no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what, yeah. you have that same connection yep. and it's just as strong for everyone around yep. you. So it's it's so special. But before I let you go, I need to know. Yeah. The Hoboken question. Yeah. What is your favorite place to get I'm gonna go with breakfast because I'm a big breakfast okay. person. Breakfast in Hoboken. Breakfast in Hoboken, there are a couple spots. Recently, I have fallen in love with this place. Oh, I love this place for lunch, but I didn't realize that they had like a whole breakfast menu. Mm -hmm. Gigi's Cafe. Okay. Super good, but also Luca Brazze's. Okay. Or Braza. I don't know where that, I don't know if it's Brazzies or Brazza. <laughs> I, I could be butchering it. No it's worries. On, it's on first. Okay. Um, incredible breakfast wraps. Incredible breakfast wraps. Oh, man. But I I mean, I have I have the food list. I'll give it to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're the plug. If, for, if anyone needs the food list, it's you yeah. who people should be going to. But, Kate, thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you so I'm much. I'm so glad we got to dive into everything. Yeah. You, you helped me understand TikTok even a little bit better. Good, good. Can't thank you enough. And hopefully you're at more games this year. Yeah, me too. I'm so excited. Awesome. Thank Thanks you. so much. That's a wrap on my episode with Kate. Thank you so much, Kate. You were an amazing guest. Make sure you all rate, review, and subscribe on the iHeartRadio app or wherever else you listen to your podcasts. And that's it for us on this episode of New York Her. We'll see you next time.